Namaste. I am Kumar Mahadevan, chef from Sydney, Abhi's Indian restaurant. I wish all our Indian citizens and countrymen a happy Independence Day. I thank the Indian Consul General of Sydney for giving me an opportunity to showcase some of our Indian food. This dessert, what I am planning to do today is beetroot halwa. I have had this dessert as a child in India, in Tirunelveli, my hometown. The ingredient for this dessert is beetroot, you got some fresh ghee, cashew nuts, rose petal jam, pistachios, kishmish or sultanas. I got some condensed milk and evaporated milk. This is a slightly a modern take on uh, the carrot halwa, what the North Indians are used to. Let's go check it out and see how this turns out. So, after putting the uh, uruli on the stove, you add nice fresh ghee and turn the stove on. So once the ghee is almost uh, slightly getting hot, reduce the flame a little bit and add in your cashews first. The cashew nut goes, that's the first one you put it in because the cashew nuts gets takes a little bit longer to cook than the sultanas. So as you can see, the, 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 the cashew nuts are slightly turning into a, a golden brown now. So as, and they will continue to cook even after you take it. So we don't want to burn the cashews, that's for sure. So it's, it's getting nice and brown. So at this stage, we can take the garnish. This is for the garnish. Make sure that you add the sultanas very quickly as they are as they are doing that and you use all the with the heat the sultanas will swell up and you can take and keep the rest for your garnish at this stage you can add the beetroot so now i have purposely kept half the beet half the sultanas inside so that they give a nice lovely sweetness to the dish we just keep cooking the beetroot till it starts sweating and giving its own juices. As I mentioned, this utensil or this vessel will retain its heat and it's good. That is the reason we are, why we have chosen this. It won't burn. The most priority thing is take a heavy bottom pan. So once all the water is sort of almost uh, trying to evaporate, we can start adding milk. So I've got this evaporated milk, I'm adding on the evaporated milk and then I add the condensed milk. Okay, this is, yeah, traditionally you add the milk, the whole thing is cooked in reduction of milk. So here, instead of cooking that, I've added evaporated milk, which is a nicer take and I've added some condensed milk. Slowly let it cook. We are adding this rose petal jam. So that has got a lot of sugar in it. So that's why I have added a bit less sugar in this. Once when you add the rose petal jam, okay, we will wait for this to cook for about 20 minutes and then we will add the rose petal jam. As you can see, there's not much water left inside there. At this A stage, we add the rose petal jam and we'll cook it for further five to 10 minutes. If you want to add a little bit of sugar, and spoil yourself, why not? It's after all in the Independence Day celebration. There's no water there. Hmm. Pretty good. As you can see, it is almost not sticking to the fingers, and this is the stage we should be ready for plating. Put in the hot alloy in here. Not scooping. All right. We are ready for the garnish of this dish. So we've got some uh, ghee fried uh, cashew nuts, sultanas and the pistachio nuts which were not fried in the ghee and this is going to go on top of the dish and we're going to decorate the dish. So this is uh, freshly grated koya which uh, we are going to be garnishing the dish with and we are just putting a little bit of a grated koya around it so that the koya tastes nice and then we have, as we all know, the edible silver leaves, which 
we are all very familiar with in our Indian sweets. So we've got some freshly scooped uh, roast petal ice cream, which is what we're going to be serving this with. And this is how it goes to table. 